Alright, so you're wandering through the internet. Entertainment levels are low. You both are about to die of boredom. What do you want to do? I look for a cool new podcast! Yeah, and I assist. Alright, give me an investigation check. Oh yeah, and roll with advantage. Bond's Journal, page 99. So we traveled to the beach to talk with the merpeople, but they seem to be dead. Next stop on our list is Waterdeep. A large, bustling coastal town like that should help orient us towards our goal. Kinian managed to get some sort of heading from a guy at a bar. Not exactly sure what the info was, but Kinian seems confident. While we were searching for info, Keo managed to unlock some of the secrets of his book that he always carries around. Looks like it might be a story and not really all spells after all. After Minette returned from gathering magical stuff and such, we headed out again to Lascan, I think? Uh, Does anybody want to do anything over those five days? Well, I'm of two minds. Yes? I would either want to... I want to set up my still, but I'm more excited about the book. Okay. At least for the first half of the first day, depending on how boring it is to translate. Okay. Um, it it says uh, mm-hmm. uh, the first bit that you translate okay. um, uh, seems to talk about uh, the information uh, hidden with it. Um, something about spells, uh, because you're doing a rough translation on, on the first like half of the first day. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, It seems to be uh, about hiding spells. About hiding spells. That's interesting. I would continue. Okay. Over the five days? Yeah. So long as it's it's, it's as good a stuff as that. So you translate chapter one. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have written spark notes, basically. Okay. Um, In in the words of Epido, um, Mm -hmm. So, your book is almost completed, by the way. I've, I've written almost all eight chapters. Uh-huh. It's like 20-something pages. So, it's been good. It's been real nice. It's fun. <laughs> Not 20 full pages. Anyways, okay. <clears throat> it's been fun. <clears throat> um, anybody else over the next five days? Did I'm... I learn anything useful when From... I was in Waterford? That's right. Waterdeep. Um, yeah, Waterdeep. You... You learned the exact same thing uh, uh, about the fishing trade, um, and that crime uh, crime went up okay. uh, drastically, uh, and that they are hurting for uh, for people. And um, you got the sense that there might be a employment opportunity for the group, um, as uh, as one of your friends uh, who is prone to uh, speculation. Um, uh, some crazy speculations mm-hmm. um, uh, believes that there might be a uh, a new under underground boss uh, rising up just because of how much uh, stuff is going on. Uh, so. Okay. Hey, Phil. Oh, that's right. So, so I'm training. I'm training on the the top of the ship. And strangely, I'm not drinking. And you hear me speaking in uh, in Orcish and going through basically different uh, combat stances and swinging. And from time to time, I'm bumping my ring. Yeah. And it sounds like into your minds you're hearing Orcish voices as Ooh. well. Okay. So so randomly you're hearing like Orcish words kind of beam into your head telepathically because I keep bumping my ring while I'm training. And nice. the sending thing was communicated to us when we got the rings, I'm assuming? Yep. yep. Bon, new perception check. Who <laughs> yeah, new ring, who does? <laughs> nice. I like it. <laughs> oh, we've uh, got perception like, check, please, Bon. Oh, of course. Did I get a ring? Yes, mm-hmm. everybody got a ring. You get a ring, you get a ring. Everybody gets a ring. Uh, my passive is 17. Nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you look back and you see some of uh, Kinian's stances, 
and they look extremely familiar to the forms in your book. Not not identical, uh, but they definitely seem similar. Anybody else? For the next yeah. five days. So, you know, originally I was going to just translate it and yeah. get another spell book. Yeah. But seeing what I've read, I'm actually going to write on the other book, the book of Chio. <laughs> Kyo. 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 <laughs> Keto. You should say the book of Keto. Yeah, the book of Keto. Okay. And I, I start writing a passage about how I've lived on this world a long seven and a half years. And, <laughs> yeah, talk about my greatness. <laughs> wow. Uh, I do two things over the five days. One, when I see Kinian's practicing looking familiar, mm-hmm. I wing out. I go, I go up to him and I draw my quarterstaff uh, off of my pack. I do it in a way that's like obvious. I don't want to fight you. Then, and I'm totally not understanding that you want to fight me. <laughs> I'm just going through the motions and still talking to myself in orcish. I poke at you with the quarterstaff. I, I stop for a moment. What? And I redo like ready stance kind of a thing. <laughs> Battle! <laughs> I take my my axe and put it on my back, and I walk over and I pick up a staff. Uh, uh, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. just a like a stick we would use yep, for, for, for for docking. docking. Yeah, yeah. And perfect. I pick it up, and it's it's way too big. I'm just ah whatever, and I just walk toward you. <laughs> I go whoa. whoa, whoa. And I go and pick up my other quarter staff and hold it out. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna drop it. Quarter staff. <laughs> lucky, lucky shouts from the from the helm. He says, "Thank you, Bon." <laughs> Breaking my goddamn staffs. <laughs> <laughs> do we spar? We can spar. All right. How do you want to spar? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Constitution. Just do Constitution that. saves. Cons. 10. 26. Ow. Yeah, you you come out a little, uh, you get gassed. Uh, but that makes sense. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, the other thing I do over the five days is, I'm assuming you're still drinking when you're not doing your orcish no, dancing. The whole, the whole time I'm training. Oh, so over the five days you've sobered? I've sobered up. Oh, shit. Uh, you start noticing that there's a plethora of drink. Like uh, uh, usually, <laughs> the alchemy jug is still constantly pouring forth <laughs> <laughs> liquid. It's just accumulating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, skinny, skinny actually starts asking around. Like, you think Kinian's okay? Um, been noticing he ain't drinking no more. He's off the sauce. You all right? So, what do you want to do with my book? Yeah, I want to take it out and see if I can. Force knowledge upon myself about the protected. Okay. Uh, you read through it, and it's the same images and, and such. Uh, you don't seem to get any more information uh, from it as far as, like, uh, history or anything like that. It's all, like, battle-focused, though. Um, and it's very, like, it's very militaristic. Kind of how, how your father was with uh, with chores and things like that. Like, it had to be done. The whole, like, you make your bed the first t- thing in the day because that gives you a sense of accomplishment, and that flows into the next thing type thing. Uh, it, it's a very that kind of a book. Yeah. All right. That's it, then. Okay. Uh, Matt, <clears throat> are you crafting? Yep. Okay. I'm working on... Uh, my own broom of flying. Okay. Uh, and, question uh, mark, hmm? real quick. Hmm? Did you dole out a uh, cloak? I had not yet. Okay. Continue. Would you like a cloak of displacement? Sure. Okay. Why not? Okay. You get the other one. Well, thank you. I also become more familiar with the new functionality of my gloves. Okay. So... Let's see, you said I got everything up to the boots the and armor, armor stuff. Because that's all if you tear it all down and get into your own stuff. Yep. And that doesn't apply. Alright. 
I can no longer suffocate or drown. I have advantage on saving throws uh, regarding poisonous gases and inhaled poisons. Basically anything revolving around breathing. Advantage on. <laughs> As an action, I can fly up to 20 feet. As a reaction, I can choose not to take any fall damage. Just decide. Just mm-hmm. that's feather fall, right? That's it's the, not feather it's, fall. It's not really. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, okay. You just take no damage yeah, from the fall. Okay. I can imbue some magic into a weapon over the course of a short rest, which doubles the range of the weapon. The max range. Yep. The max range, and I do not suffer any disadvantage due to range. Meaning you can shoot point blank. Yep. Uh, as well. That's that's how I interpreted it. So okay. you don't have a point blank problem so anymore. I can shoot anything from zero from to zero to I think. Zero to a thousand a feet. Thousand feet. Yeah. At the same proficiency. <laughs> and I can imbue some of my spell power into the weapon as well. Mm-hmm. And you don't even get, get out of the ship anymore. No, <laughs> he's, <laughs> no. he's the Gatlin. <laughs> Just snipe him from up above. No big deal. You might um, need perception checks. To yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> and I can somehow. It's a shrieking bolt, so I can attack another creature using a spell slot. That um, does. It's like a knockback. Yeah. Yeah. And I can levitate. Yeah. It's a bonus action. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty legit. Yep. All right. Anything else? Otherwise, we're going to land in this game. Um, I'm going to try and get Fatso to put together the Dwarf Kia stuff and set up my stealth. Yeah. Um, yeah, he puts it He puts it together. He he doesn't mind the heights or anything. No, no. Oh, you're it's getting him to put the doghouse together? It's my gloves. Okay, so. okay. You know, up on my, on my little crow's nest. Yeah, uh, Fatso... Uh, He's scared of heights, uh, and he says, uh, "He says, uh, now Keo, I. <laughs> that's not for me. You want to talk to Lola though, and uh, and he okay. points at her, and he's like, Lola, come on over here. But Keo's gotta, got some height things for you. You got to keep the secret, Pinky promise. Okay, and he, his skinny Pinky just like I bite his Pinky." <laughs> He slaps you no, with not, a... Not like hard. Yeah, yeah. Like a, yeah, and he, he like, flops you with a, a spatula and... I remember what'll happen if you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Lola, Lola puts it together um, yeah. up in the crow's nest uh, for you. Mm-hmm. And that's... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Did you need help putting the distillery together? Well, that was part of it. Oh, okay, yeah. Fatso will do that part. Or, or is that up there, too? That's up there. Oh, it's all up there. Okay. It's all up there. Oh, yeah. Keo's Lola's got you covered. Works. Okay. <laughs> so Keo's distillery is up in the air. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it. And we land in the scan. Let's paint a picture of Lascan real quick. So you come in, and this is a port town. And it is a bustling port town. From, uh, from the outside looking in... Uh, this port town is very official. Kinian and Palami know uh, for a fact that this is uh, this is rotted to the core uh, and is very superficial on the outside. Yeah. Kinian, you see as uh, you approach the Mage's Tower of Lascan, which has uh, like an obsidian tree uh, uh, strikes out from the ground and has uh, cardinal direction uh, branches. So a branch facing north, a branch facing south, and so on. Now is winter starting to touch Luskin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're we're starting to get close to winter. For everyone else, it's uh, uh, early to mid fall, Mm -hmm. um, but it is starting to snow up here. So it's cold. It's very. Kyo gets a little moody as we closer to this time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I get my crag cat headdress back on. It helps keep me warm. Okay. Uh, Rope is going around, like, handing out uh, heavy furs to everybody as you guys get closer to this uh, colder weather. Uh, You guys touch down, and Palami says, uh, Now, uh, I've got some things to buy. 
got an idea. Uh, she strikes out off uh, into town, or starts to at least. She she looks at everybody else and she's she says, uh, "Well, are you guys going shopping too? Maybe I can just roll along with you guys. Otherwise, deuces." I've got business. Plenty of shopping. But... <laughs> uh, Kyo tries to pass off like, "Yeah, I'm going shopping." <laughs> he goes with her. Okay, okay. Keep an eye on her. What do you guys want to do in this town? Uh, I know what Kenny wants to do. Yeah. What does everybody else want to do? Just kind of chill and wait for Kenny to come back? Uh, is the... Palami says... Uh, she says, now is the, is the basic idea, like, we're going to leave as soon as Kenny's back? I'm not going to shop very long, but, uh, uh, I mean, I, I want to make sure that I come back and Keo doesn't have to fly me in this cold air. It... It's super chilly. Sounds good. Yeah? We, we know why we're we're getting into it. I'm here to see my fence. I have no cool clue. I mean, same. Not, not you, her. Okay. You, DM. Yes. I, I know. <laughs> yes. Do uh, we know? You why? guys know Kinian does. I don't think Kinian shared uh, his information. We know he's here to get more information. Yeah. So we're kind of at his yeah. mercy. Yeah. Why? I follow Kenyon at stealth. Ooh. Okay. All right. So uh, let's resolve your guys' stuff. Uh, Kenyon, perception. Uh, what's your passive? 15. 15. Okay. So, I mean, he's probably going to yeah. beat that. Yeah. What's your active stealth? Nope. nope. 10. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you notice uh, Bond shortly after you set out. Do you do anything? I push the ring and speak telepathically. Okay. Just dangerous folks in this town, Bond. I respond. Um, All the more reason you shouldn't go alone. Take this. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> these, these, these are my people. I continue following you. Okay. Uh, so, you enter into another tavern. And uh, this tavern has uh, changed names many times over the years. It's currently called the Wet Sea Otter. And uh, uh, you s- <laughs> just rolling with it, man. <laughs> um, uh, I produce the Zent, the Tarum hand gesture. Yeah. As yeah. I answer. Are you right next to him, Bob? I'll follow in after him, like okay. 10 feet behind or so. Okay. So uh, uh, you give the uh, very intricate Zent gesture. And um, uh, they let you in. There's thugs sitting out in front of this uh, this bar uh, who just kind of nod at Kenyon, and Kenyon just walks in like he owns the place. Bon, I need you to make a performance check, please, to see if you can do the same gesture. That's more like it. Ooh, wow. Damn, son. Uh, that's, uh... He's got charisma. Yes, he does. 23. Yeah, you walk up and and you are you are blindfolded, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you do the exact same hand gestures. You do not miss a beat. And they nod at you. Um, and then they realize that nodding at you probably doesn't make sense. And they grunt, okay. And uh, uh, you just walk right in like you own the place. Uh, setting the scene, this is a tiered uh, bar where you walk down into uh, into an area, and when you walk in, that is the top tier. So top tier is ground level, and uh, you basically go to the basement for drinks and things like that. Poker games happen up in the top tier. Same deal, you order your customary uh, drink of information, which is a uh, specific ale that doesn't exist, but Zents know it to uh, be the way to gather info. Shirley Temple. <laughs> Shirley Temple. <laughs> and it's when delicious. you delicious. Yes, it's divine. When you order it, a old Zentarum slides up next to you. You recognize him as uh, Neroth. Uh, he has some age on him, uh, as you haven't seen him for a couple of years. Uh, Neroth is a old, dirty sea rat that looks like he is perpetually soaked to the bone, but really is just that unclean. Uh, when he smiles, his yellow rotted teeth and breath that stinks of death and bourbon, uh, shines true. 
His tendrils of hair go just past his shoulders, and the whites of his eyes have yellowed. He also has bruises on his forearms that look very old. Puts a hand on your shoulder and he says, uh, <laughs> Kinian, it's been a long time. Definitely. You're looking worse for wear. <laughs> oh, I'm getting along. And he, like, when he laughs, he, like, grabs his side uh, and winces a little bit. He says, uh, <laughs> what kind of information are you, are you looking for? I say, I'm going to apologize for this in advance. And I headbutt him. <laughs> All right. Uh, he just knocks out. Uh, this guy is not strong by any means. Uh, a, a cold breeze could have knocked him over. What do you want to do? I pick him up. The, <laughs> the bartender is like, Hey, what's going on here? And I'm gone. <laughs> and uh, I'm back on the ship. Oh, shit. You're bomb. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, bomb. You see him. You see him disappear. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Is anybody reacting to my presence at all, or? Just... Uh, no, no. You you walked in like you own the place, and uh, when after you walk in, like you make your way down the stairs, and you see the you know the smoky under uh, under area, and you see this quick exchange, and then uh, Kinian throws the the old nasty guy over his shoulder and just bamps the whip. I sit at the bar for a few minutes, just trying to gauge the reactions of the bartender. And Everybody is saw. freaking out. Like, they are rushing around and are trying to figure out what to do. You seem to, you get the sense that the person who Kenny and took was the person who makes the calls on what to do. And so they all don't, they really don't have an idea uh, what to do next. It's, it's utter chaos. I get a really good idea. Okay. What would be the translation for police? For what? Like, We're translating In this what? world, what would police be? Constables. Yeah, constables. constables. Yep, yep. I shout out, I'll go get the constable! Everybody shuts down. <laughs> the whole the whole bar looks at you. Are you trying to get killed? <laughs> and, and you, like, everything is quiet. You hear... Uh, you hear everything go dead silent. Then you hear a couple of chips like tip over off of a snack <laughs> from up above uh, in the poker area, and somebody like drops a glass that like clangs on the ground and starts to roll and lands at your feet. The bartender says, uh, "Would you say your name was again?" And I just disappear. <laughs> <laughs> No, Keo, uh, you go with, yeah, with Palami, and yeah. uh, uh, she is shopping around, and she's getting uh, clockwork wheels. Okay. And uh, she is uh, talking with a lot of gnomish uh, mm-hmm. artisans, and just getting a collection of these, I'm and gonna, some odds and ends of other things. I'm going to buy enough junk that it doesn't seem suspicious. Okay. That I'm watching her. Okay. Are you, are you uh, striking up a conversation with her? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, what what kind of information are you? Are you just asking so, about? So her? I'm like, what are your intentions with Manet? <laughs> she <laughs> she blushes <laughs> and says, uh, she says, uh, Kyo, I I don't know if I feel comfortable enough talking with you about that. Uh, I I assure you, me and Manette and I are are good friends. Uh, it better be honorable. Oh, absolutely. Because I wouldn't want Minute's virtue to be harmed in any way. Yeah, and it gets super awkward between yeah. you guys. <laughs> like, and, and she's she turns and she's like, "These are nice flowers. Um, where'd you get those glasses from? Those are those are pretty sweet spectacles." Oh, uh, yeah. You can find anything in Waterdeep. <laughs> We're that, here. That's true. Um, and and uh, she just continues shopping, yeah. and she picks up those those. Other trinkets. than that, I just make awkward small talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you just keep asking, like some weather we're having, huh? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, they make it back to the ship, but mm-hmm. some time has passed. You bamf uh, back to the ship, 
And about a minute later, uh, Bond bamfs them too. Uh, where do you go when you bamf in, uh, Kinnian? I go straight to the alchemy jug. Okay, where where do you, where are you keeping that? Down in the uh, mess hall? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you, you get down in the mess hall, and you, you've got this body, and you've got yeah. the alchemy jug. I uh, set him down, basically, and on the on the bench, like, holding him up. Yeah, yeah. And I say, ale, and I pour two, two pints, uh-huh. and then I, like, pint? Yeah. Eh. And I, <laughs> I pour some into his mouth. <laughs> he starts to choke. I need, I need you to make a uh, a health uh, a medicine check, please. Twenty. Okay, you you give him the good old orcish CPR by slapping him real hard on the back. Uh, when you do, he comes to and he's just he's coughing up all this alcohol. I got you beer. <laughs> He, he rubs his head and he looks around. And he's get in, get in. <sighs> this is not how I thought we'd meet. And he looks around and uh, he says, "Where the hell are we?" We're on my ship. There's too many, too many, you know, prying ears in your bar. My God, Skinian. Uh, what do you want? We are in search of King Hikatan, and uh, I didn't dare bring up his name with too many, too many people around. Who is King Hikatan? King of Storm Giants, right? Mm, oh, okay. I I know nothing. But what do you know of the 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 fish disappearance and any word of the Tritons? I I heard that. Fishing was real bad down in in Waterdeep, and uh, our fishers up here are <laughs> making a fortune. I did hear they heard a crazy story from uh, from one of the fishers. They came in and they were talking about a ship that was that looked like a squid, it's circling the purple rocks out to the west. Um, that sounds promising. Other than that, uh. I mean, that's, that's all I've heard. I mean, I don't really have much scuttlebutt otherwise. Have you been making money off this fish, fish deal? <laughs> you know me, Kidian. I make money whenever there's an opportunity. Mm. You're not involved. No. Are you? No. In- oh, you mean in the fish disappearance? Oh, gods, no. Mm-mm. No, that's... But it's given quite an opportunity. And I I get closer. You're not involved, right? He gets a little bit closer, and you can smell the rot on his breath, and he says, uh, I am not involved. Okay. He drinks his, his ale. And he says, uh, so uh, where where are we? Oh, we're, we're just outside town. Well, okay. Maybe you could use a break. Sorry, mm-hmm. sorry about your head. That hurt. Um, okay. So, can I go? Am I a prisoner? I didn't want to keep drinking. Mm, okay. I've I've taken a <laughs> week off of drinking, knowing that I was going to come. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. A week? Yeah. <laughs> Pussy. Oh. <laughs> What'd you give up drinking for? Was it too difficult for you? And... <laughs> He's like, he's put two pints back by this time. And uh, as he's laughing, like he's grabbing his side uh, and wincing in pain. What'd you do there? <laughs> I, I have no clue. My sides, they hurt sometimes. Whatever. I, it's getting old. Eh, yeah. I don't think it's anything big to worry about. And he looks at you with his, his dark yellow eyes. And you guys... Just kind of pass the time for a while. Um, about a couple hours. That's when Keo and Polami uh, come back. And you guys are starting to board the ship. And uh, Kenny and you're walking uh, this drunk uh, uh, Neroth off the ship. And uh, and he's got you like... He's wobbling and holding onto your shoulder. 
And he says, uh, well, if you need any more information, Gideon, you know where to find me. And, uh, and he, like, stumbles down the gangplank and, uh, bumps past, uh, Poami and stumbles back into town. And Poami, she, she looks at you and she says, Gideon, who, who, do you know who that is? Yeah. Why was he on our ship? Huh. He had some information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she gets on the ship and she heads down to the shop to start tinkering. So what do you guys want to do? Is everybody back on the ship? Yes. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I try my hand at the at the wheel again. <laughs> okay. Uh, performance, please. Oh, yeah. I've got all sorts of performance. Oh, this would be like air vehicles. <laughs> Zero. Zero! <laughs> it's just as bad as the first time. <laughs> and Lucky, like, quickly, like, dumps you off of this thing because it's starting to pitch, like, uh, to the water. And, uh... I've been drinking. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and you haven't been drinking for a while, so uh, it's affecting you. Lucky says, uh... So, uh, where are we heading to? Purple rocks. I. And he sets the course westward. Hey guys, this is Adam, your audio wizard. I just wanted to come at you with a quick message here. So as a reminder, uh, we're starting the finale next week. It'll be uh, two or two or three episodes, and that'll finish off season one. So shit's about to get real. The party's about to try and track down King Hikatan. Uh, hopefully they're successful. We'll find out here in a minute. The episode's a bit longer than normal. Got a little over an hour to go still. Uh, so without further ado, I hope you enjoy... The Hunt for King Hikatan. All right, uh, you guys reach a collection of isles uh, called the Purple Rocks. Uh, and you see that because uh, that they are named as such because uh, the rock, the cliff faces are adorned with uh, amethyst. Is the purple right? Yes. Purple. It has amethyst veins moving through these rock faces. It is very rich with this this gem, uh, and there's no ship uh, that you see. How do you want to go about this searching for the ship? Me. Around, around the yeah, surrounding area. Okay. I start ritual casting my uh, commune with nature. Oh, okay. So do you set Lucky on like a grid search pattern type type thing? Yeah. Totally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, he starts getting into that kind of pattern. What are you asking from... I mean, what what is your totem that comes to you? Is it a bear or a wolf or... Either or. Okay. Um, but I'm basically speaking with nature and asking if there's been a, a ship spotted in this area recently. Okay. That looks like a squid. Okay. Is there a fail rate on that? I don't know. Okay. Um, so basically what, what you see is the fog, uh, the light clouds, uh, uh, they start to shape. Uh, with a little bit of a wind gust, and it creates a uh, it creates a wolf that walks on air uh, to your ship, up to you, and starts asking or listening to your question. Gives knowledge of the land within three miles of you. Okay. In caves or other natural underground settings, the radius is limited to three hundred feet. However, we're not in caves. Mm -hmm. But basically, I can get knowledge of up to three facts. Plants, minerals, animals, uh, peoples, powerful celestials, fey, beings, elementals, undead, influence from other planes of existence or buildings. For example, you could determine the location of powerful undead in the area, 
Location of major sources of drinking water. Mm -hmm. Location of any towns nearby. So I'm seeing this sort of a, as a, is there any ships nearby? Yeah. I mean, it's not the same as a building, but same, similar gist. Okay. Absolutely. They, uh, the, this wolf uh, communes uh, with you. He, he doesn't talk, but walks, walks off the bow of the ship and starts, like, walking, uh, like, strafing slightly uh, uh, to the right. And Lucky's like, what the hell is going on? Follow the wolf. Aye, right, Captain. Sandy's and... trapped in a well. <laughs> and he sets, sets course. The wolf, the wolf leads you for a half day, bringing you to evening. And on the uh, horizon in the uh, orange sky, uh, you or on the horizon line, uh, you can see a dot of a ship uh, off yonder. The ship starts getting closer, um, and you're starting to see these these tendrils pull out from the stern of the ship uh, in a shape familiar like a squid, like a giant squid. Uh, it has a uh, it has a arrow shaped uh, nose to it and a very large mass. It's getting to be late evening now. Do you want to continue to approach? I, I mash the the button on my ring, kind of like boop, 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 boop. Okay. We see the ship. Okay. Should we attack? I think we should attack. Did you guys put the rings back on? Over. I got mine on. Over. Let's maybe gather some more information before we make any sudden action. So how do you guys want to do this? I don't know because I'm up in the crow's nest. Oh, with like, the ring oh, off? Yeah. Okay. I took it off because it was getting in the way of translating. Yeah, yeah. Do you respond? Mm -hmm. Dude, let's go check it out. <laughs> how high up is the ship? Uh, cruising altitude, um, which is about 800 feet. Um, this kill would be all about it. Yeah. Uh, so about 800 feet up there. Do we have any idea how far away it is? You guys can make out rough well, where we're yeah we're gonna be intersecting us. It. Yeah, it's it's uh you guys can start to see some details uh mm -hmm. because you've seen the tendrils and stuff like that. Um, it's probably not accounting for height. Mm -hmm. It's its x coordinate is probably about 1500 feet to mm -hmm. 2000 feet around there uh away i run over to the the grating where uh leads down to minette's shop okay and i yell down to minette that uh i'm about to do something stupid <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i put my ring back on and go upstairs <laughs> um with a passive perception of 10 do i hear the balloon. I would have. Um, I'm away. Yeah, from. yeah. I mean, it's not that big. I would have kind of walked up to the Kyo's nest. Yeah, the mast. Mast, anyways, yep. and kind of shouted up at you, like. Pulled the Are ring you coming? Ring. I need a bell. Rung the bell, or when you put the ring back on, I think I have something. You, to bring uh, to bring uh, you put it on, and it uh, does like this boom noise when you put it back on. Ring. Yeah. Ring. 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 All, all, all the things that they said. Voicemails. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta yeah, turn it voicemails. around and put it back on and hit it, and it'll review your messages. For you. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't get the messages. No. <laughs> That'd be horrible if you put it on like everything. Yeah. Else. So, oh, oh God. <laughs> uh, and they all play simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so you tell Keo. Uh, then, yeah, just kind of yeah. like, a, hey, are you coming? Because I thought he had his ring on. Yep. So that's the first time it's made that noise? Mm-hmm. Are you an arcana check on that? You can attempt to, yeah. Is it the first time he's put the ring back on since he took it off? Yes. 22. 22. Uh, you believe that that uh, noise is the siphoning of uh, magic spent for the fast attunement. It does not absorb your attunement sh uh, slot, but like Lyriel explained, trading this ring uh, will expend its magic. 
You don't take it off. I grab my wizard hat and robe and yep. um, my broom. Okay. And my staff. So do you guys have like a meeting of mine somewhere? I point at the ship and I say, I'm going to jump on uh, it. Looks like a squid. It'll probably hold. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to do? Can Let's you... save King Hikatan! What's everybody else doing? What Wait, are you guys waiting to we're, see what King Hikatan This is a meeting. Yeah, th this is a meeting. So, I mean, I mean, I you mean, guys are, are hashing out a plan. Are we fairly confident that Hikatan is going to be here? If he's not here, check out that sweet boat. Okay. How, Did how you? big does the book, the the the, 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 the boat look? Okay, uh, let me teach you it something looks about to be human um, society. Stealing is wrong. Mm -hmm. But what if I want it more? Tough luck. I think it only works if they want it less. Oh. <laughs> well, we can ask them. Um, it looks to be about twice the size as your boat. Did you relay information to us about this, or are we just like completely in the dark? My I had no idea we were looking for a squid boat. My contact. <laughs> said that there was a strange boat circling around here after the disappearance. Okay. And Kyo, that makes more sense. He w walks off and he starts yelling, Man the harpoons! Prepare for boarding action! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Staravash and... I say, and, aye, aye! Wait, I'm the captain. <laughs> <laughs> and Staravash and... Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, One-Eyed Joe sprint, one to the bow, one to the stern, and they man the harpoon. And uh, and Staravash like kicks one of the uh, baseboards. The their, their spotlights are lit. Okay. Uh, Staravash kicks one of the baseboards and it flips upward and uh, open and uh, with like a hinge. And uh, there are these these barbed like harpoons uh, to load these uh, blista. I mind to say all we know is there is. A ship lurking around in troubled areas doesn't necessarily mean it's the ship's fault. Maybe they're trying to help. Maybe we should approach them. I have to do this a couple times, right? This is a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Maybe we should. I mean, you guys are in a circle. Approach them and say something nice about them first before we just go and kill them all. <laughs> Not necessarily going to kill them all. <laughs> Do you say that out loud? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> kill them all. It takes me too long to figure out where the button is. <laughs> and then your dexterity. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, what do you guys want to do then? Can we hail them before we kill them? We should be able to. I don't want any shots fired at my ship. I'd rather away team down to the ship. I mean, is there anyone on deck that and we, we can, can always see return on their ship? All right, so why don't we jump down, but not to kill them right off the bat? Because yeah. presumably they Search. already see that we're then here. Because we haven't really been that stealthy, I'm assuming. The spotlights did just Yeah, and then the spotlights <laughs> yeah. are playing on the fog. <laughs> so, like, so, the clouds up above as like, like, Air Bash is trying to learn how to use it. The the landing skids. How far away are we now? <laughs> What's that? How far away are we now? Uh, you are closing the distance. You are probably getting to about, uh, let's say, let's say a thousand feet. Okay. I thought we were at 800. No, no, no. We're, that's we're cruising at... height. Oh. You are a thousand feet laterally. So, I mean, you're hypotenuse, whatever. I'm not calculating that. So okay. You guys do that. I if you did, want to be I in range, I, yeah, yeah, I did the math. I kind of figured when we're six hundred feet laterally, yeah. I can start shooting. Okay, <laughs> all right. Assuming we don't lose any altitude. Well, right. I would shout to say hello or something, but I don't think they would hear me from this far. I turned to ten. And I Just say, the one. Can you get us on the ship? I get on my broom. I mean. I could use. Okay. One second. I could use my prayer beads to cast wind walking for all of us, but it does take a minute for us to change forms. That's fine. 
So we'll just have to make sure we kind of find a little somewhere to change form back into ourselves when we're there, in case they aren't friendly. Otherwise it'd be really awkward to be like slowly rematerializing and they're like stabbing at the fog turning into orc. <laughs> I'm not going to want to walk with them. No? No. Okay. You got a broom up anyway. Yeah, given so. the distance, the fact that in a minute I can move 600 feet. Right. You know, if I, they start dematerializing and I head off, mm -hmm. I'm going to get there by the time they get there. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not, I'm and the wind walk takes a lot longer. You might not be able to catch the ship. I think wind walk speed is real slow. It's fast. Is it fast? No, it's fast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, it's different then. It's a travel spell. I figure okay, it's. I, I think it's a good way to get on the ship without risking ours. Okay. No, well, more importantly, it's a good way to get off the ship too if things start going south. Well. Though we have yeah. our teleportation things. Never mind. We have those yep. now. Yep. So, Sama's so plan. What are we doing? <laughs> Wimwalk for for the four, and then Keo. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just going to fly. Okay, then okay. just for me and Kenyon, then. Apparently we need to and pair some good? good. You're good. Okay. Okay. He's going to go so, out on the spike in the front. <laughs> are you guys reconning, then? Is that the idea? I'm reconning. Yeah. yeah? Recon. Okay. Uh, just to make you guys aware, uh, when you turn, uh, when you do Windwalk, mm -hmm. uh, the rings aren't working. So, yeah. like, I mean, because they're not existing. Yeah. So, you wind walk, and uh, you start catching up to the ship. You get closer and closer, and you start to see the ship is taking on uh, a more, more and more of a squid look to it. And uh, straddling the mast of the ship is a hulking giant, a storm giant. Um, with a long beard and a bald head, uh, he is strapped down by four chains and he stares blankly up into the sky with a uh, scowl of a face, looks looking like he's about to shout. Um, his eyes are unmoving and glaring uh, into the sky, and his beard is like windswept, but in the wrong way. Uh, sort of like frozen. Yeah, kind of like frozen in time. Uh, this doesn't look good. You count... Five crew members are working around cleaning uh, cleaning the area around the storm giant and the decks and stuff like that, making sure that the storm giant uh, does not uh, start to mold and stuff like that from all the sea mold and all that goodness. There are five others, four of them manning two ballistas, uh, two in the uh, fore castle and two in the aft castle. That's the bow of the ship and the stern of the ship. What? species are all these? What are these? Uh, all humans. Okay. Um, except for one who is manning the helm um, in the aft castle next to the two ballistae. Um, and that is a half-orc uh, who has a uh, scar over his left eye. He's got like a cleft lip. This is a two-tiered uh, ship. So the aft and four castles are sitting above the main deck of the ship where the uh, where the giant lays below in the center, uh, and then below those castles are, are rooms. And then you see next to those, uh, it actually goes down further under, under the deck. Uh, where would you guys like to adventure? I'm gonna pass that around. Is there anyone currently at the top of the mast? Uh, yes, one. So there's four. Uh, one for each ballistae, and then there's one actively looking in the crow's nest. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to count it up, mm -hmm. five cleaning crew, five that are on active lookout duty. And then I can't remember, can I go mm -hmm. like quickly explore the rest of the ship? Yeah, absolutely. See how if many others to. there are? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to. Uh, so you just kind of make your rounds? Just a quick round to get like a general count. Okay. What you see is this. You find a captain's quarters, and uh, you see a uh, an old human wizard who uh, whose eyes have clouded over, uh, and he is uh, bleeding from his nose, uh, and he has a dagger in his hand, and he is writing the word Imrith, and dragon, and storm giant. 
into uh, the wood. He's carving it. You mm -hmm. see that his desk drawer is popped open, and uh, you see a spell book with a quill and a knocked over ink well. And it is, uh, it's leaking all over. It's making a huge mess. Then, going across the ship, you see uh, another room, and it is a quarters uh, with uh, hammocks, ten hammocks. And every hammock is full with more crew members sleeping. Uh, down below is a storeroom. You see nothing but harmless rats in this uh, storehold with, okay. uh, with many, uh, many rations. Uh, you think this is definitely a place to uh, check up on to restore your or, or replenish your uh, stores if mm -hmm. if you yeah. were to take this ship. Yeah. And then uh, you find a another uh, quarters, and you think this is the potentially the first mate's quarters. Um, it is roughed up like there have been like daggers and stuff like that. Uh, you see a, a crude drawing. That loosely represents the uh, the mage that uh, you just saw carving, uh, mm -hmm. and you see three daggers, uh, two stuck uh, side by side in its head, and one in its groin. Uh, you see a very messy bed and a uh, desk that uh, that has like a lock on the front. Okay. Um, what was the wizard carving again? I'm a I'm storm a giant. Storm giant and dragon. Dragon. Okay. So, from what I've seen, there's the ten crew on deck, there's ten crew sleeping, and then there's the wizard that I'm assuming is doing something to keep the storm giant, who I'm also assuming is King Hikatan, kind of unconscious, whatever. Quite possible. Okay. He's definitely in the thralls of some sort yeah, of Yeah, like some sort of, yeah. Yep. Um, is there a way, if I were to materialize outside would there be a way for me to barricade the door so people from down below couldn't get out or does it open inwards you don't oh i see what you're saying yeah uh so you want to know if the doors open out to the deck or into the rooms yeah they open into the rooms darn it okay you think uh from your search the two empty rooms are probably your safest rooms as i'm flying with my broom do i see any any lights from this ship? Or... Yeah, they've they've got some lights, uh, but it's mainly for the crew. Uh, there are two spotlights uh, mm -hmm. on each aft and forecastle, and they are looking outward on the horizon. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more directional, so they're not looking up. Yep. <clears throat> I wish I could signal to Kinian in mist form. Kinian, are you following her? Or are you doing the? Are um, you just? I searched the ship too. Okay, and. I start materializing in the the half orcs quarters, the first mate's quarters. Oh, okay. The moment I see that there's like a, a locked. Oh yeah. Section. I'm all like. Okay. Like okay. you I'll might you might you might be you. seeing me like materialize. Yeah. There. So I'll rematerialize next to you. Okay. <clears throat> well, as I approach, okay. I'm going to use prestidigitation fly by and put out their spotlights. Oh, okay. When you count? do, you hear, who put out the lights? <laughs> do I need to roll a stealth on this? Um, no, you're, you're fine. They're as long units. as you're cruising high enough. Well, I'd be about 60 feet above. Well, and then the yes. lights would be going out, so then they yes, wouldn't be you, able to see. Yeah, you... Because I think that's the range on them. Press the digitation, okay. if I remember right. You, you need to do a stealth, because you've got somebody in the uh, crow's nest. They're all focused on the bright white light heading towards Are the you moon. flying towards them yeah. right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> okay. How close is, uh, is our ship getting? Pretty close. Uh, oh, I have to get close. Okay. So do you want to revise that? It's 10 feet. Okay. So you get close. I'm going to uh, buzz it. You know, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Down Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Okay is I'm going to use my owl familiar. I'll use my action to have my owl cast press the digitation. Oh shit, so, so he buzzes the he buzzes no, it's, the it's just an owl. And he has that flyby attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, you know, or the flyby ability. Yep. 
Can you make him look like a seagull? So it provokes <laughs> no opportunity attacks when it flies out of an enemy's reach. So I'm going to have it. It has a fly speed of 60 as well. Okay. So I'm going to have it dip down, get within 10 feet. Okay. Poof. 10 feet of the lights, right? Of the light. Okay. And then swoop. Light. There's four lights. Mm hmm. Okay. And it'll do it just each, each time. And I okay. don't know if it needs a stealth, seeing as it's a bird. Uh, yeah, let's do a stealth. Okay. Stealth plus three. Okay. So that would be a 16 stealth. A 16. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So what, what happens is the owl, uh, mm -hmm. Hootie, uh, flies down and just like wings back and just dive bombs, right? And yeah. just, whoosh, and, and, uh, swoops by the lights. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they, they just chunk, 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 chunk. They turn out, the first set go out, uh, you hear, what the fuck, who turned the lights out? And then the second set go, and you hear, was that a fucking owl? What, what is going on? And you hear from the crow's nest, you're, holy shit, what is that light? <laughs> uh, the half-orc shouts, uh, alarm! And you, and you hear... The muzzle flash. <laughs> you see a muzzle flash. And a third You flying. have the opportunity. Go for it. What do you want to? Who do you want to shoot? Okay, so I will. I will break this down a little. A little more for you. We can retcon a little bit. The first lights go out. The second lights go out. What do you want to do? You can act now. So, out of curiosity, I'm a thousand feet away. Mm -hmm. Do I have advantage when I'm shooting people? Because they can't see me. I mean, you are stealth. One. I mean, you're uh, hidden. Yes, stealth. you're hidden. You're hidden, yeah. At least your first shot. Yeah. Um, I think probably hitting the guy in the crow's nest is mm -hmm. first say, priority. Let's say it's a surprise <laughs> attack. It's probably a little surprising to suddenly just be yeah. sniped. <laughs> I have, like, a gaping hole in your torso. Oh, my God. One can What's that red dot on your forehead? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Uh twenty-two. Twenty-two hits, yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Bon, you're flying towards this, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna say that you are up with Keo. Uh, yeah. Which is more towards the ship than <clears throat> you're closer to the the ship than you are to your ship. Okay. Okay. Twenty one damage. Twenty one. Keo and Bon, you see him drop, and like he starts to like put his hand up to yell, and when he goes to yell, uh, you see the back of his head explode, and he just drops. You don't hear anything. We're fairly close because to Manette's gun is only normal attack sound, so uh, it's long enough away that it wouldn't sound more than like a pop gun, and that is uh, over the waves is not audible. So and it's foggy. It's bit. not that foggy. It's not mm -hmm. that foggy. Okay, okay. And then my next thing to do, what comes around? I reload. <laughs> I don't know for an initiative yet. But, uh, we are going to do you guys, and then we're going to get back to me and Anne. Because my next uh, action would be to cast <clears throat> greater invisibility on myself and Bob. Okay. Done. The, light, the, the light's tin. gone. Yes. <clears throat> yep. Uh, except for the, the spots light. Except for the spotlights. There are two spotlights on your guys' ship. So. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, you probably materialize a few seconds before me. Mm -hmm. But... Before you can even say anything, really, even if you were starting to say something, <laughs> I'm going to suggest that we try to kill that wizard, since all the rest of them are going to be on deck, whatever. We can notify them of our plans, but I think we should go kill him. All right. He's an old guy. He'll probably drop quick. I, uh... <laughs> or he'll, like, kill us all, but... I, I, I try difference. to open up the the drawer, the first mates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me get to that page. <clears throat> One second. Well, and then while you're getting to that page, mm -hmm. I will quickly just send a message through the ring. Um, Ten crew sleeping in ship. 
-hmm. And then a second message. Um, one wizard casting ritual, possibly on giant. Okay. So, so you with you, Kinney and Inch. You noted the. You noted basically everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you guys are up to speed with everything they scouted out. Damn, son, you really did do recon. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Their lookout's taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Is that what you? Lookout's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Crow's nest dead. Uh, okay, uh, Kenny. Uh, what are you doing? I'm trying to open the, the locked. Is, okay, is it a desk? It's definitely locked. Yep, it's a desk. <clears throat> it's definitely locked. I uh, I pull out my friend Hugh. And give it a little. You tap it. Okay. Okay. So you hit the you hit the desk, and when you do, I need you to make a dexterity check for me, please, or a dexterity save. Yep. <laughs> 17. <laughs> what? 17? Okay. Uh, you hit the desk, and you when you do, um, you hear like this cracking of glass, and uh, a green gas spills out from the desk. Um, so, a <laughs> uh, 10 foot radius sphere uh, centered on this desk. Uh, which is going to include you and the size of the room. Think, please. Thank you. Pretty much the whole room. Yep, the uh, whole room. So uh, this includes ten. Um, and blah blah blah. I need con saving throws from. You, you uh, release poison gas. Yep. From the trap. Yep. Just from tapping the table with you. Oh, sweet! I'm gonna be totally fine. Twenty. 19. 19. Okay, so 19 and 20, uh, you are, you you feel this green gas, like, flow into your nostrils, and as you do, the skin in your nostrils start to harden, and your muscles start to tense, and you overcome it, and uh, your muscles are sore, uh, but you are okay. You feel like that might have uh, uh, petrified you. Oh, nice. Uh, Maybe some of the, you know, wind was still kind yeah, of in the room. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, so uh, the the uh, desk is still locked. Uh, when you pull back, you see where your blade cut. There is a thin uh, glass tube that runs uh, along where the desk and the drawer come together. Mm. Yeah, break it open. Open. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead and do a strength for me, please. A strength check if you're attacking it with your your axe or whatever. Sure. Uh-huh. A lot. A lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's hitting a desk. He hits. Right, right. <laughs> no, it was more of... Anyways, okay. So, the, <laughs> you hit it with a lot. The drawer breaks open. And uh, and it what spills out is this. Are you ready? Uh, you find a, a sack of gold that spills out. Uh, of these broken three compartments, uh, uh, this drawer like is real thick, and it it breaks, and a sack of gold spills out. It's about 100 g or 180 GP when you count it eventually. Um, uh, the second hold uh, holds non magical daggers. Um, How many? <clears throat> Twelve. And the third oh, one contains uh, marked playing cards in a wooden case and a spyglass, which is insanely expensive in this game. Yes. Um, and a diary with uh, a black leather <laughs> cover uh, and like a deep crimson red page edges. And that's about it. Okay. I take the spyglass and then tuck it in my pack. Okay. I'll grab the gold and do the daggers look like they... I know they're not magical, but do they look like they are high quality? Yeah, they're or? high quality. They're not masterwork, but they're nice daggers. I take the three daggers off the wall. Okay. And just those three. Okay. And I'll take four of the daggers. And the rest go in the party fun? Or well, you I don't, just I don't, leave it I don't have a bag of holding on me. Oh, that's so. right. Okay. I'm just going to take that. Yep. Uh, and then... Uh, Did we grab the journal and stuff? Yeah, I grabbed the diary. Right, Why not? Cool. Okay. Dear diary... Well, I, I, I flipped up. Is there like any writing in it, or is it totally blank? 
It is, there's a ton already. Okay, then I'll take it with me. Okay. Uh, that is when you hear the crew exclaim about the lights going out and what's that, a fucking owl? I say, yep. Tin and I are, are heading through the ship to the, the, the magic guy. The magic man. The wizard <laughs> in the captain's quarters. Okay. They're called wizards? <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh, let's all roll initiative and get into battle. I'm trying to wrap this up before the. And oh, call it damn. Phew, 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 phew. Okay, ah. sounds like Keel goes near the front. I'm at 23. 21. Okay. 16. Okay. I wasted my good roll. And actually, I've gotten okay. a few points. And then on is Dervish yeah. coming, or is he? Chill- He's been chilling on the ship. Stare I think he is manning a gun. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. So is he in initiative or no? Yeah. Roll, roll initiative for him. I think that's seventeen. <laughs> Good stare. <steroid. laughs> that's all my pal. Twenty-one. Okay, and okay. Bond. Had... Just a heads up, Stairvash is what the. The ship acts on, so uh, he will have two bolt attacks, but it's two ballistas basically. It's him and the other guy. All right. It is Keo's turn. All right. So being invisible. Yep. Keo continues to circle, okay. keeping within ninety feet of the ship. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. within. And he is going to start casting twinned chromatic orbs to take out the. People on deck. <laughs> okay. Who do you want to take out first? Uh, twin chromatic orb, right? So it's two orbs. It'll be two people. Okay. Uh, do you want one, one will be on the guy at the steering, and one will be to the closest Ooh. ballista to him. Okay. Whoever's manning that. Okay. There's two right next to him. Yep. Yeah. Two right next to him. So whichever's on the okay. same side. Is okay. Him. Yep. 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 And that's DM discretion. I yep. Guess. And I have advantage because I'm invisible. Okay. So, first little spell slot. One sorcery point. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> no, yeah, not really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. And this, this, that's the first one, so that's the guy steering. So it's 68. <laughs> and these are fire. Yep. Because I get to add my charisma modifier. Jeez. 10, 20, 31 fire damage. 31 fire damage? Yeah, but okay. first, so that's to the, the guy. With your modifier. Okay. Yeah. 30. He looks rough. And then the second one goes to the guy at the nearest ballista. And that would be 15, that's a 20 to hit. Uh, 20 hits. 20 hits. Looking ones. This. No, that's only 3d8 plus. There go. That's 18 fire. Okay. He's dead. Okay. Yep. Next. Gideon. What are you doing? Hey y'all. Um, so from scoping out this ship. Assuming you want to get to that wizard, right? Scoping out this ship, it will take you three full turns to get there. It is a very long deck. And you need to go upstairs. Um, we can do this. Yeah. We can do this. Okay. Um, yeah, what's your, what's your max move? 40. 35 or 40. Two, two full turns. If you double move on each turn. I don't know if I feel I'll be able to keep Tin safe. Okay. If we're going above the ship. Okay. Why do you feel the need to keep him safe? It's my character. Well, I'm not killing the party. I'm I'll be right behind you. Party. I got 35. It's not that big of a difference. Oh, thank you. Mm. So, what is on the side of the ship? If you open the door, you see the head of the giant. Then you see all the chains, and you see uh, on the other side is the hold. So, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's also five crew member down here. Is it possible 
that I actually run along the giant. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Are you trying to run on top of them, or yeah. you just... Yeah, what? hell yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, you get... I'm running right on the center of the ship. You get the you get the inspirations for that. So, you run... The good you, feels. You, uh, you hop up, and it's just a nice, gentle slope where you hop up, but it's like his shoulder or something like that. And, yeah. uh, and you start sprinting across the top of this giant, um, dodging dodging over these massive chains. Okay. It is now Staravash's turn. So where would Staravash like the ballistas to shoot? Kyo took out two of the four ballista man. Nope. No, took Kyo out. took out one ballista. ballista and, um, and Staravash is going to aim at two of the ballistas. Uh, one on the aft, which is closest to you, and then uh, one on the forecastle. All right. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So go ahead and make your attack, and it is with uh, it is with dex. With a big-ass crossbow. Yep. It's a ranged attack. Add dex to the roll? Yeah. Well, right? and- well, no, no. It is a dex. So so you're doing... It's just... Roll what do you roll? Perfect. I rolled 18. Yep. Plus proficiency. So... 21. Okay. You definitely hit because it's a plus six to, to hit. So, 21. Uh, and another one. <laughs> six. Six. Uh, so that's a, a 12 in total, which is going to meet. So, <laughs> so uh, two bolts shoot across the sky. Right, plus um, six. Where are you getting that from? That is the ballista. No, ballista is a plus six straight, weapon. Six plus the... the... It is your roll plus proficiency plus your plus your attack bonus, isn't it? Yeah, but okay. unless it's like a magical plus six ballista, which you don't even have plus six weapons in this edition. Um, that's that's going that's including all the modifiers if that's out of the stat block. Oh, okay. So that, that's with what, without proficiency. That, that'd be just roll plus the six. Oh, okay. Would be First one hits. What's the second one? Nine. Nine. Okay. I, I can't stand that. No, sir. Not gonna do it. <laughs> you you said no, just, uh, you said is that nine without the plus six? If we're just treating right. it like they're that's bonuses, nine you know. after the plus six. That's nine after the plus six. Okay. Sorry, same just give me the straight. But... Nope, that's fine. Uh, okay, so one hits, uh, and that's the aft castle. Uh, uh, your damage is three d ten. Go for it. I will hand this over after okay. you've killed all the ballista. Ten? Hey, he's a great weapon master, right? No. Uh, and he no. is dead. <laughs> so you have killed all of the aft castle except for the driver, uh, the helmsman. Uh, next is uh, Bon, your turn. Bon makes his way to the four castle. Is that what it was called? Where'd the map go? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yes, the four castle. castle. Which has two guys manning ballista, right? Yep. Any fists of unbroken air, one of the guys. Okay. Really a strength saving throw. <laughs> that one. And uh, you go 20 feet opposite of me. Okay. And take uh, 12 force damage. Okay. Are you trying to shoot him off into the water or into his buddy? Off into the water. Okay. How much force damage? 12. 12. You, uh, you punch him with unbroken air and... Uh, and his neck snaps uh, in a weird angle, um, and uh, and he just flies out into the water and splashes, and uh, it is he did. yeah he did, he didn't make it. He did. How many times uh, did he skip across the water? <laughs> a couple of times actually. Uh, yes, new record. <laughs> Anything else? I uh, I use my bonus to kick the other guy in the jaw. Okay. In the jaw. Yeah. <laughs> so two attacks. That's like the whole action. Yeah, that's, it's a full action to use your key. Okay, and that's a. Just gotta beat a 12. Uh, okay, I beat a 12. Alright, uh, damage. <laughs> Six. Six. Still kicking. Yep. I know I am. Yep. But what is he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next is. 10. Normally, I wouldn't run over a unconscious or whatever kind of yeah time state. time locked yeah okay creature, but 
Kenyon's doing it, so why not? Kenyon's a lot heavier than me, so I don't think I will do any additional damage. True. So I'm going to dash. Yep. Yep. Same. Mount a giant. All right. Uh, just to be clear, too, uh, because of the route Kinian took, uh, there was no attacks of opportunity. This this giant goes up pretty mm-hmm. pretty large. So you follow the same path. Yep. And you double move. It is now Raoul's turn or Roll's turn. That's his name. He looks at the two who have died behind him, and he drops everything he's doing and like jumps over the uh he jumps over this uh this like half fence or whatever the barrier to go down yeah the railing and he jumps over and lands on the landing in front of the captain's quarters and he kicks the door in and it slams shut behind him like it bounces off the wall and slams shut behind him as he moves in wait so who is he again that's the half orc okay so he went into the captain's quarters yep Uh, he was my target. <laughs> <laughs> Annette, your turn. You have one helmsman left, and then you have uh, five. Well, the orc. Or I'm sorry, not helmsman. Uh, 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 ballista guy, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, and you've got five cleaning crew who are now brandishing weapons and about to chase your friends. You would kill the ballista guy. Okay. <laughs> He's got the more serious weapon. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. Uh, 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 16. 16 hits. Okay. Let's do math. He dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bon, Bon, you punch him, and uh, uh, when you punch him, uh, a explosion erupts from, like, uh, just above where your fist was, and uh, and it blows out the back. Um, Damn, your punch just got like, upgrades. I'm just like... Oh my god, what did that book do to me? <laughs> Wasn't it a kick? No, punch. Yeah, it was a kick. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So right above where your foot lands. <laughs> uh, and Tail he dead. Whatever. He dead. I try and send a mental wink. Yeah. Oh yeah, you you, 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 sm- you send a mental wink. emoji. <laughs> just say wink. Table yeah, talking. Wink. <laughs> Table talking, you know, this is a dangerous situation because he doesn't know where we are. <laughs> oh. oh, that's right, you're invisible. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I like it. Um, next so is... So far, so good. I reload. Really like yeah. Uh, next is crew. Uh, so the crew are climbing up onto... Uh, the five remaining crew are climbing up on top of the storm giant. That takes their full actions uh, uh, and move to engage. They have fully encircled... Both Tin and Kinian. Uh, one shouts, uh, Two arms! And uh, you hear like rustling and bustling uh, coming from the crew's quarters. You hear from the captain's quarters, What? What the hell's happening? Uh, he says, Rule! What? What's going on out there? And that's, that's all you hear from the captain's quarters. You, Minette, see. On the side of the ship, uh, these two, what looks to be muta- uh, morphed uh, merfolk, are climbing up the sides of the ship, and they have landed on the top uh, top deck, uh, which is where like the crew's quarters is. Um, and uh, they are brandishing harpoons, and they look awfully mean. Do they seem to be like they look kind of angry like at, at these? Folks. No, nope. Above them, above them. Um, and only Manette see them. Oh, way. actually, no. Yeah, they fell down to where where uh, Tin and uh, Kinian are. Okay. So they are down with the uh, okay with the storm giant. And they've got no legs, by the way. Uh, so <laughs> it, 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 they are like merfolk, by the but way. they are amphibious. Uh, next is um, Kio. What would you like to do? You have five crew members in front of you and four merfolk. Okay. I know the crew members are threatening my friends. I'm going to take down two of the um, crew members who are threatening my friends. Okay. That first one with the chromatic fire orb. Um, that's a 22 to hit. That hits. Thank you. 
20 damage. Uh, 20 damage, awesome. Fire. Yep. That matters. Is that like awesome or off? Awesome? Both. And these are the ones closest to them, basically. Yes. Okay. The way I'm, I'm doing it. And then the second one, um, 19 to hit. 19 hits, yeah. Ooh, one shot of max damage. <laughs> Dead. So we got 16, um, 23, plus 3, 26. Is this chromatic work? Yeah. Okay, fire? Yeah. Yeah, he just incinerates, and he's like, ah! And he, he, like, lands on the other guy that you just burned, and they start burning together on top of the giant. Classy. Oh, that's not good, though. Uh, and I continue to circle. Okay. Uh, it is Kinian's turn. Um, so, two have died around you. You've got three left. And there's merfolk that are down below. Yep, two on each side of you. Uh, they are nowhere near you. Nowhere near me. Um, and with their impairment, it looks like it's you could easily outrun them. Okay. I turn to the, uh, the crewmen. Uh-huh. And I basically say, really? You're going to get smacked? Power <laughs> attack. Does a 13 hit? A uh, 13 hits? They did. 30 damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I turn to his friend. You could have. I think I think he rolls oh, enough is, dice to kill them if he rolls all one. His natural plus is enough to kill them. Which is yeah. disgusting. Yeah. He had a twelve on one of those. Yeah, that's a lot. Right to me. <laughs> you cleave this son of a bitch. Just like uh, I need you to make an intimidation check. A 33 plus modifier, whatever. Is modifier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they got 12, they got 50, nine health, 55 damage. Fuck, 50. <laughs> you could have killed all of them <laughs> in like one swing. And, yeah. and I'm mid sentence, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have run. <clears throat> oh my gosh. And it's a 21 intimidation. <laughs> and uh, and I finish my sentence. Uh huh. Ran. <laughs> oh, almost. You rolled 19. For 32 damage. Yeah. <laughs> so you kill all three of these. How I kind of want to imagine this is it's almost like it one is. It's, a, it's one swing. You just like, you cleave one, you start your sentence, you cleave the second, you finish your sentence, and you cleave the third. And as you're looking around, you, you see you see all the merfolk, they drop their uh, harpoons, and they start clawing up the side of the boat, <laughs> like like clawing up the way that they came in. And the, the whole time I was running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I never stopped running, I was just swinging. <laughs> and I make I like 40 it. movement ahead. Yep, I like it. Uh, <laughs> well, it was one swing. Yeah, it was, yeah. Sorry, one yeah. swing. Uh, one epic swing. Band, uh, <laughs> Does Ken Servash see any enemies? <laughs> he sees... He sees the merfolk, and that's it. And they're climbing up the, or they they're like starting the etch, but it's not their turn, so they haven't made any movement. They are scared. Uh, he's gonna just wait until something. Okay, so he shouts hold. Yeah. Uh, and the other ballista doesn't fire. Next is Bon. Is he holding for a specific? Just thing? enemies to come inside. Okay. Okay. Other Anybody aggressive, from. basically. Yep. Okay. Uh, Bon, your turn. Uh, Bon flies over to the captain's quarters door. Okay. Quietly landing. Okay. A little stealth for that. Forget. Just be like, eh. Yeah, yeah. There's enough commotion going on. Um, I'm gonna position myself so, because I'm still invisible. Okay. So that... What's your flight motion in the ocean? Oh, same as... Same as regular. It's 45. 45. Okay, it's gonna take your full move action to get there. Okay. Okay. And then I position so if somebody comes out of the door, yeah, I can hit them with my fist of unbroken air. Okay. And they go tumbling over the edge if it's 
successful. Angusta. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, you don't kick the door in or anything like that? I just hold okay. until somebody comes through. Ten. Who's wrong? I double move. <laughs> I double move to get myself to the door. Okay. And get ready to actually blow someone apart next to me. Okay. Maybe not blow them apart, but... Okay. Um, so then the you, light. You hear yeah. inside the room, uh, Tin and Bon, you hear, Roll, what the fuck is going on? And then you hear this, like, blood-curdling scream. <laughs> and, uh, and then it's cut off. Hmm. Um, it is Minette's turn. That doesn't sound good. Hmm. I have no targets. Yep. We're all gonna die. You're gonna be alone. <laughs> <laughs> There's merfolk trying to get away. <laughs> there is merfolk. I and, don't know that they're and threatening there is us. A, they're they're there, running away. There is a chained anybody. storm giant too. Yeah, shoot the guy we're probably trying to <laughs> rescue. I'm just giving you your options. How here. how close is our ship now? Uh, you are. I imagine to be like. Uh, to a point where you've probably We're told, basically just yeah, you're circling, circling at this okay. point. You've you've ordered uh, you've ordered Lucky to to just holding get it. pattern. Yeah. All right. It probably drops my altitude. Yeah. Yeah. Make it make it nice and simple for you guys. Okay. Um, I'm gonna tie the ends of my cloak to my ankles, and then jump off the ship and like wingsuit down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, oh all right. Gosh. I like it. Uh, where do you want to land? Uh, in the crow's nest, I think. You land in the crow's nest. I uh, like it. As my reaction, if he appears to like give way, mm-hmm. I'll feather fall him. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, just yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well done. Very clever. Because Kyo would definitely like to see it, but at the same time, he wouldn't want him to fall to his death. You look like a little flying squirrel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it is now uh, the crew's turn. Five people come stumbling out the crew's quarters, and uh, they are brandishing weapons. They're in their boxers, and, like, one guy one guy sleeps nude. It's super weird for him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, uh, they nude. see the carnage, and... Uh, and uh, the front guy, the new guy, is like, nope, fuck this, nope. And he, like, pushes everybody back and, like, slams the door shut. And you hear, like, a choo 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 And they start, like, barricading the door. All right. Does their best try and shoot them while they're out there for a Yeah, second. you can, you can, uh... You can hit all five. They did come spears. out, they did come out angry. So, yeah, yeah, Wait, go for it. Wait, I thought he was at the captain, was he at the cruise door? Or captain? No, 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 Stairbash. Oh, Stairbash, Stairbash. Sorry, sorry, Stairbash. Yep. Fair, fair, fair. Oh, oh. Okay, so what happens is is they open the door and the naked one's standing there and and a, a barb just comes through and it kills the guy right next to him and he just falls backwards and the guy's like splashed with this blood and he's like, fuck this, nope. And he like, he goes to shut the door, take your next shot. The, oh, I, I rolled both. So the okay, 20 let's... and 11. 11? So and so that's with a plus 6. That's oh, okay. Okay, so 16. The second one comes in, and as he's slamming the door, he gets kneeled in the chest and, like, <laughs> blown backwards, and the door shuts. And that's when you hear, choo, 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 as the other crew, the three left, have, uh, have, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Seven. No, the seven left have barricaded themselves in. 20 crew in total. Very nice. Okay. You, you hear through, like, the... Through the telepathy system. Yeah. See, at least those ones were smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, next is uh, where were we? Manette. No. 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 Thoughts. That enemy Thoughts is dead. Uh, so now Q. Marrows. Or, um, they are. They are crawling up the side. They are halfway up the side. Next is they are running. They are running away. The mer- uh, the uh, merfolk people. Uh, Kyo. I think I'm going to hold. Okay. Pat, just in the holding pattern. Okay. Anything particular? Uh, any aggressive movements? I'm just watching. Okay. Waiting so for some sort of development? Yeah. Okay. So, I guess, um, I do have some reactions that could happen if a wizard comes up, but I don't know okay. about them, so. Okay. 
Uh, Kinian, you too. Too meta for me to. Prepare. I did tell you that there was a wizard. But... I'm not wearing the ring. Oh, you're yeah, not. That's no. right. That's right. You're not. Okay. Kinian, I'm torn because from a from a meta perspective, mm-hmm. I think the the merman would be good to be around when we wake the Storm King so he can basically talk to them and maybe we get some answers about the missing fish. But Kenyon's not that smart. Yeah. No. Kenyon smash. <laughs> Where are you going? How you close start? am I to the captain's quarters? You are a... You should be one movement move, away. One movement away. Yes. You move? Yeah. Okay. There's a door in front of you. You want to open it? And then Bond... Just a bum bro in there. <laughs> oh god! Gideon flies. And this is the consequence of terrible programming. Yeah. <laughs> so I know it's a, a mage in there. Yeah. And then I've, uh, I've seen him. And then the helmsman. But we did we see? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, we did see the Just I knock on the door. He <laughs> knock on the door. What's that? I knock on the door. <laughs> there is no response. You should dramatically kick it open. Just saying. Just well, how long do you wait for the response? I don't know, basically would have waited like two seconds. I I kicked the door down. Okay, yeah, you kick it open and you see inside the room is the half orc continuously stabbing into this mage. Just one after another, just, uh, I mean, he's he's physically getting tired from how much he is stabbing into this guy. And I produce three daggers and I say, don't you need these? <laughs> I believe one was in the crotch. <laughs> I want to And I toss three room. daggers across okay. to him. Okay. Like, landing in front, like, a couple feet from the, the body. Okay. And, uh, and he looks at you and, uh... His half-orc eyes, like, lock, and uh, he grabs out without without taking his eyes off you, and he picks him up, and he starts stabbing away at this guy some more. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck no. is happening? No, we haven't all been there. <laughs> Stairvash. Is Stairvash holding again? Yeah. Okay. I walk Bond. into the room. Yeah, yeah, fine. You can peek into this room, and you see the same thing. Same with Tim. I hate... I go up to him and, and invisibly mm-hmm. grab the guy and pull him back. Okay. What What do you want to do outside that? Are you just, just trying to restrain just him? Just restrain okay. him. Okay, strength. Nine. Nine. Uh, you grab out at him and, uh, and he feels like the tug uh, on his collar and he does like this whirlwind whip of his hand and uh, breaks the hold and pushes back, brandishing the daggers and ready for anything to happen. Uh, he breaks from your hold. Uh, next is uh, Tin. Does he look aggressive or defensive? He was aggressive, now he's defensive. He looks uh, like a cage, uh, an animal backed into a corner. And the wizard's like dead, dead, dead. Oh dead. yeah, like mutilated. Yeah. <laughs> like th- this was definitely there was some hate to it. I will ask the orc what was the wizard doing. He doesn't know how to respond to that. He says, uh, "Well, he was busy dying just a second ago." I start laughing. <laughs> was he casting a spell on the giant out there? I have no clue. He's a crazy wizard. Was. We're, was a crazy wizard. True. My response. We're here for the giant. Are you going to stop us? Or are you going to stand Will you leave out? me alive? If you're not going to attack us, then... Yes. Okay. Well, now I'm very disappointed because I was really excited to kill someone. <laughs> but I will do a quick perception in the room to see... What there is, yeah. You see the carvings uh, and everything before, which is uh, Captain's Cabin. Uh, you see the spell book and uh, the words uh, Dragon, Imris, uh, and uh, Storm Giant. Okay. 
Uh, you do notice uh, in the time since, uh, you notice two new words have been carved, oh. and it's sisters and treachery. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm just going to end my turn by sending a message to the ring telling mm -hmm. Manette that he should come examine the magical artifacts. Okay. Because I don't want to, like, destroy them and then accidentally kill the giant or something. Okay. Roll's going to basically, like, he's going to defend a position, a corner in the room, and basically, like, he's drawn a, he's literally drawn a line. In, in wizard blood. Yes, in <laughs> wizard blood. And, uh, and it's like a half circle that, uh, that corners him in the room, and, uh, uh, he says, you don't step past this. I walk right up to the line. Hmm. Just as, like, a challenge? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, seriously. Or you're like, you don't step past this. <laughs> and and I step past the line. Oh, god. He attacks you. He takes uh, his two short swords out and attacks. 24 and a uh, 21. Mm -hmm. uh, con save for both, please. Uh, both as in uh, both attacks. Oh. Uh, first attack you take uh, five, six, eight, eight damage. Second attack you take uh, nine damage. Um, and what is your con saves? My lowest is an eighteen. Okay. Uh, you save as the poison starts to burn your your veins, but. You shrug it off. Um, what is this poison? This is nothing. It is now Manette's turn. Um, so these chains. <clears throat> yes. Are, are there like locks on them? No, they are. They're like securely fastened down to the ship. Uh, okay. There's no lock. Okay. Uh, they definitely have like this magical aura about them. Okay. I'll jump out of the crow's nest and okay. use my. Ability to fly and go down to the okay. And if it fails him, I will feather fall. Okay, it works fine. <laughs> Got this. Uh, Got this. Okay, and uh, so you fly over, um, and you see the scene, and he's attacking Kenny. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot. Okay, uh, so you land in the doorway, and you see this uh, this orc attacking at Kenny. Twenty to hit. A 20 is going to hit. Uh, 15. 15 damage? 15 damage. Okay. Wow. Awful. Four ones out of six. Wow! Double snake eyes. That sucks. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, taking the crew out of initiative and the Murrows have made it over the top of the edge and are falling down into the water. Yo! Your turn. You're hearing gun blasts. Not wild <laughs> ones, but gun blasts. Well, I think I would go see what's going on. Okay. You fly down, mm -hmm. uh, invisible lake. Yeah. And what happens? This is a greater invisibility, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This yep. is round five of it. What happens? So I fly down. I'm sure 60 feet of movement will get me to the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I fly into the room. I look around. Mm -hmm. I see the guy. I grab the spell book. Okay. So I, you know, it lifts up and I start paging through it. And I was okay. like, so guys, what's going on? It's got a ton of spells in it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it is <laughs> Kenyon's turn. I laugh. At his attempt to poison me. And uh, I don't even bother raging. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going punch for punch with this guy. Okay. I go, uh, oh, you think that's a neat trick? And I pull out a funny looking spear and stab it right into him. Okay. Recklessly. Uh, I don't think you can do that without raging. No, I can't. I thought you were already in rage. Yeah, you had said... He said. dropped Ridge. Well, I moved oh, yeah. into the room and oh, I kicked the door open. He didn't know what it's anything that oh, round. Oh, so okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So does a ridiculous hit? The 21 yeah. plus yeah, more? Okay. Is so, this the, the returning lance? Or the lance of... Javelin of lightning? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So as, as I stick the spear into him, lightning erupts. <laughs> Queen's alignment again. <laughs> chaotic. Uh, chaotic evil. Yeah. Chaotic neutral, I think, is the technical. The technical. I think it was chaotic evil. <laughs> 29 d- damage. 29 damage? Okay. He's hanging on barely. So, I, I speak down to him and I'm just like, don't start something that you can't finish. Sit down and I headbutt him as hard as I can. Okay. Subdual. <laughs> Is that subdual damage? Yeah. Okay. And it's a crit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. How much damage? What kind of damage? Just headbutt damage. Uh, one, Just strength. One d four plus your strength, I believe. Well, if it's an unarmed attack, yeah. and you don't have it trained, you know. Unless you have like Tavern Brawler or you're a monk or it's something. Probably oh, just like okay. eight. It's, it's probably one like plus eight. strength modifier. Yeah, one plus yeah, it's just eight damage. Okay. Like, yep. And uh, well, your your one would be tripled though. Tripled because you're an orc. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it is. So yeah, because no. it's rolled. Oh. Um. Okay. Anyways, it's a D one. It's more than enough, and he is out. Okay. He is slumped in his corner behind his line. That can you cross? Um, and I, I turn and look at the line, and I'm like, "That's right." <laughs> um, next is uh, okay. We are out of initiative. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so thirty seconds later. Yep, you've read. Bon and I, we both appear, disappear, oh, or reappear. Okay. Hey, Manette. The wizard was carving these words into this block here. I don't know if. This is some sort of spell that's been affecting the giant out there. Can you take a look? Sure, I'll take a look. Uh, you don't need to roll for it. Uh, it. There is no magic coming from this area at all. Is there alcohol coming from this area? <laughs> no. Damn it. There, you spotted alcohol down in the hold. Oh, I'm... Uh, I'm directly below you. I'm okay. going to... Take Hack you a hole through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking you to the the door to get to the crew. Okay, to get to the crew because they barricaded because they barricaded oh. the door. The, oh God, the food's down there. No, 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 no. Fine. no. Fine. The crew is on the opposite side of the ship. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Then I go to the hole. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, next. Uh, so, anyways, so Minette, uh, you're inspecting this, and Kinian's like, uh, I'm gonna go to the hole. And just like, <laughs> like heads down there. Um, Art's got a pirate. Yeah, Keo. This is a spell book full of many, many spells. Yeah. Um, is it like a specific guy? What's that? It's like a specific guy spell book? Or yeah. Um, here you go. It's the top of the second page, and all of the bottom of the first page. Um. Okay. So these. What do you want to do? I'm going to go inspect those chains, because okay. those seem magical. Yes. So you inspect these chains, and they are definitely magical. Uh, you think that the only way to remove them, uh, if you so chose, was is to attack them with a magical weapon to break them. Uh, piercing, Sorry. bludgeoning, or slashing should do the trick as long as it's magical. That's what you believe. I've got bludgeoning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll I'll pass the word along that okay. we need to kill. We can take the chains take out. The chains out. Okay. And then so I blast mine apart. Okay. So you go down and you're just like you're like uh, destroy the chains with magical things, right? And then you mm-hmm. blow yours apart. And when you do, uh, uh, the one chain like because there's it's it's two chains crossed over the chest and two crossed over the legs. Uh, your chain like snaps apart. Uh, after blowing it away and uh, it being taut, it flings away. Does everybody else want to do the same? Basically, busy yeah. drinking. Yeah, I'm just busy drinking. Smashing. Yeah. Okay, Wacko-wacking you do, stuff. you do, um, and basically you 
you knock these away. Uh, Minette, you finish off the last chain. Uh, when you do, like, this this spell goes off, and it's just like, boom, like an EMP blast. It moves across the water, pushing the water away from the boat, and, uh, and it sends, like, these massive ripples. And you see the eyes of the giant uh, close, and he finishes his sentence. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> he says... Some alliance you are, alliance of fools. I shall smash you. What the hell is going on? And uh, and he like sits up and he starts like he starts to stand and the boat rocks and he's he's holding on to the mast and he's uh, he's wavering with the waves and he says, "I shall kill all." What do you guys want to do? We came here to rescue you and bring you to your daughter, Sarissa. We are not here to harm you. I need a, what do you call it, check? Persuasion. Persuasion with advantage, please. Okay. So that was 14, so that's 17. 17. Or sorry, 16. Back okay. math. Uh, he says, uh, I don't know how you got that name, but I'd call bullshit. Hey, Kenyon, do you have the conch that Sarissa gave us on you? Oh, no, he's down. Damn it. Okay. He's down drinking. Okay. Uh, Kenyon, I need that conch. Get up here. With the ring. 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 Uh, yes. Yep. I come stumbling up with a, a tankard of ale. And uh, in one hand, I'm holding the conch. Okay. In the other hand, it's the tankard. And I'm like... Drinking out from of the, the conch, conch. Oh and God. drinking out of the tanker. <laughs> I'm like, why? I was busy. Okay. Does someone want to follow up on that? What are you guys doing? Because okay, so how does it work? Like, when you activate it, only one person will teleport, or can we all like hold if, hands and if, teleport? If you're as a group? attuned, if someone is attuned to the item, which by now Kenny and has Kenyon better, is definitely <laughs> attuned. <laughs> Uh, ah. If he blows it, then he can take a group along with. Yep. Okay. And that includes bringing the conch shell with. Yep. Okay. If you blow it when you're not attuned to it, you teleport. Okay. Along. Which we found out. Yes. Mm-hmm. Good memory. What do you want to do? Are you King Hikatan? I guess we should. I guess should have asked that at the beginning. I. Okay, we will take you to Sarissa now. She gave us this magic conch to teleport to, um, whatchamacallit, Maelstrom? Yeah. Yeah. When when you finish that sentence, uh, Kinian, like, starts to eye the, the conch and, like, is drinking and is not, like, you know, like, not quite sure, like, because he's in mid-gulp if he can blow into it and... <laughs> Activate it, right? Uh, you see tendrils come up from the water. They're big, thick, meaty tendrils, and they snap the the mast of the ship, and it goes clambering down. Uh, one of the tendrils goes and grabs King Hikatan by the forearm and uh, pulls him back, and another one uh, grabs and pulls him back, and a tendril shoots up in the center where the mast is. And it busts the ship, and it starts to break. Uh, As the ship is breaking, uh, you see down below this giant maw in the ripples of water that are flowing out into the uh, ship. You see a giant maw of a kraken bearing down on the ship. I spit take like a motherfucker. (laughs) You You spit take? Yes. (laughs) Okay. Hey everybody, Uh, it's Alan, your DM, and uh, I wanted to say thank you from the cast and crew for listening to Roll With Advantage. We really appreciate it. If you feel like you want to support the podcast or um, uh, even want to get on the podcast in all sorts of different ways, go ahead and check us out at Patreon, uh, patreon.com backslash roll with advantage uh we've got all sorts of different support structures uh that have got fun little things for each of the levels if you can't support monetarily 
comments and subscriptions go a very long ways. So if you could comment in iTunes or on YouTube, uh, that would help out the podcast so much. We also love to interact with our fans. Uh, if you use the hashtag roll with advantage on Twitter, or you can post in our subreddit, we, we will be happy to, uh, to engage with you guys. Um, it's a super fun way to get to know some of us, and uh, you get to ask questions about your favorite characters um, or about the world, uh, what's going on in the background, stuff like that. Um, we also want to say a big thank you for Incompetech.com and BattleBards for letting us use their music uh, and sound effects. They do a fantastic job, and I highly suggest you guys go check them out. Um, just beautiful work from everybody there. For a full list of the pieces we use, uh, go ahead and check out the description, and uh, you'll find it there. So, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye!